Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. As I look up at this awning from my latest build and it shelters me from the rain, I'm thinking about this and I'm maybe I'm thinking I need more awnings for more shelter from the rain, you know? Like, this one over here is also pretty good, but then these books here, completely unsheltered. Now, I was thinking this enchanting slash tool armor building should be like its own thing originally. But maybe it should be an outgrowth of this greenhouse type building where I store all my plant supplies. I don't know. In some ways, it makes sense. Ooh. I was thinking like at first, like, oh, I'll just have it be like a super low roof or something. But what if we actually built like a tower here? Now, the problem is I've got towers over there. So do I need a tower here? Arguably, no. But it would look like a cool add-on to this structure. And it would actually then complement Castle Ravenloft pretty neatly. So let's go ahead and see how many stone bricks we have. Some, which some people might say, Joe, are some stone bricks enough? I don't know, man. I'm not in charge of that. Let's figure out, though, what we can work with here. Now, the minimum diameter for this tower is going to be about three blocks or so. So if we kind of came through here like this and had this be three wide. Well, actually, this needs to really be five wide, doesn't it? So that's kind of okay. Because, yeah, we can't just have exposed books sticking out. Now, at that point, should we have this jut out further here, we could have the trail kind of go more this way and have... Whoops. Dang it. Can have this kind of come out like this, even... So, we put our entrance door there. Dang it, pickaxes, stop moving spots in my hotbar. Okay. So, this is a start. We've got, goes five. But that's going to break this, then, unless it goes further back, won't it? Yeah, because this is supposed to be five across. No, okay, okay, so this is the one that's five across. Boom, look at this, guys. I'm solving problems and I'm taking names. I did not actually take anyone's name. So if anyone has a name that they would like to give me, feel free to leave it in the comments section below. A lot of them sometimes are, might be kind, sometimes they might be cruel. But you know what? I gotta say, people ask me, like, Joe, doesn't it bother you that people say mean things about you on the internet with the comments and stuff? And the answer is, I'm one of those people that kind of just always expects things to be bad. I mean, I try to be optimistic, but that takes effort. Like, instinctively, I just kind of assume things won't be good. And then when they are good, I'm pleasantly surprised, you know? Like, this tower idea, I kind of figured it would be bad, but maybe it's good. So, hey, I'm even more happy about how good an idea this tower thing was. But yeah, like, um... I might expect to get 10 mean comments on a YouTube video. But what I don't expect is to get one nice comment. But then, historically and statistically speaking, I will get at least one nice comment. But I'll still viscerally be surprised by it, and it makes me happy. So, anyway. Yeah. Whoops, what were we doing? We were making a thing here. Yeah, yeah, okay. Should I have the same doors on this as I do for that? That's kind of a strange question I'm realizing, but... As I look down on this, if this is going to kind of feel like it's part of the same structure, maybe I should. But More importantly, I'm going to need a lot more stone to make this work. So let's run over here where we have a ton of stone and grab some. Time skip. Stone brick in hand, we soar toward the dawn. But we will not reach it. We have no interest in reaching the dawn because our flight is far shorter. I'm also realizing if I'm going to break a bunch of torches, I'm probably going to need to replace them so we don't get mobs spawning. So let's uh, see that as a sign. Torch. That ah, wait. No, I don't necessarily need torches here. They're fine. Okay. What am I worried about? Dang it. Now, this is the only tower-shaped thing that I've got built in this part of the base, so I'm kind of not sure what I want to do with the roof for it. 
Should I make a continuation of the glass roof that I have here? In some ways, that actually seems sound. So like if I just had it come up like so to there, and then down to here, that would actually kind of complement the overall structure kind of nicely. Whoops. Dang it, pickaxe. Why are you not in my third slot? You have one job. Okay. So, yeah, if we came around like so, and just kind of match the uh, kind of setup of the roof there, that I think could be pretty interesting. Now, we are short on glass then. Also, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking maybe I should have more glass in the walls to kind of complement these panes like we have here, or this, this strap. And these are glass panes, not glass blocks, although the roof is block. So we'll need a combination of the two. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that and keep on building. Time skip! Glass in hand, we are going to come over here and extend this roof a little bit. I think that this is going to be the way to go. I feel like if we bring this past there just as far as we had the other one, which is, I think, one block past, that's going to feel like a continuation of that, and it won't be too much. I'm worried a little bit that I might not have sufficient materiel to complete this, though. We might have to go on a sand dig, which, ooh, was not my intent for this episode. Was that not the... Dang it, I thought that was the silk touch one. Placing the final pieces of glass for the roof, it becomes clear that having this support here aligned with the tower somehow would be very visually appealing. So what I was kind of thinking of doing is I would come down here like, let's say so, and, whoops, add a kind of a little lip here that I could then use to kind of extend supports out to hold the glass in place. Now, can I fly to there from here? Dang it. This is a perfect job for an ender pearl. Unfortunately, I don't have an ender pearl supply. I have a present medical supply. So I'm just gonna presently ender pearl my way up there. Not exactly. Up there. Exactly. Okay, boom. So, we're gonna break those blocks and what I think I'm gonna do is put these up here, like so. You know what? These are just kind of stretched out. So maybe what I'm going to do is have them like that. Let's see. Does that look dumb? It looks kind of weird because nothing else in this whole thing stretches out at all. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty weird. Also, that wrecks the overhang appearance. So, like, if we want to have an overhang feel here. Whoa, dang it. Uh, every time. Some of you guys are probably like, Joe, why don't you ender pearl better? Just do what you're doing, but not terrible. The answer is, I don't know, man. It's hard. So, we're going to set this up like so here. To jut out a little bit more. And I like how that feels. It's good. But I'm also starting to think that maybe this support here should also have come out one on a stairwell piece. Like, just hear me out, right? So we set up a stair here, we set that up there, and then we have the glass come out one further. That kind of seems like it... Whoops. There we go, that was the silk touch pick. See, so now we've got multiple pieces that are jutting out. And it looks weirder. It's a strange knowledge-filled tower. Oh, you know what the secret for that is? The secret for that is that I should have gone up here. Dang it. And we're going to remove this one. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to... Uh, I don't know, man. This whole thing is actually now super weird. We are back atop my map, and look at what we have snagged. I was down underground, and I found several stacks, well, two and a half stacks of lapis lazuli and 11 diamonds. So, I was thinking, like, where would I put this lapis lazuli? Oh, wait, that's right. 
I actually built something worth using. And you know what? Let's put the diamonds here too, in case we need to repair some diamond stuff. Look at this. On the whole, this is pretty good. Off camera, when I was digging, I also put in additional windows here and here, which kind of showcase this farm area and give us a little extra light. I extended the height of this window. This one I left as is. That window was fine. And uh, let's see, what else did I do? Oh yeah, I made these little um, kind of grabbers for the roof extend out from every side, which I think gives it a more unified design on the whole. Is that level across there? Oh yeah, that's right, it is. Boom. So this building went from being pretty plain Jane to pretty cool fool. Now, you might say, Joe, should you really have two different types of doors? I think it's appropriate to have different types of doors. You have this door for, like, the garden area, because you don't want to have a fancy door when you got a hand full of potatoes. And then we've got the magic area for when your hand is not full of potatoes or when it's full of magic orbs. Boom. Check that magic action out. I got magic. I've got action. I've got spirit, and I've got traction. I wonder if I can... Jump atop, whoa, yeah, here. So let's see, just to showcase a little bit more of the roof, I kind of have this indented on this side. I was thinking about doing a bit more of a sweep. Is this my silk touch pickaxe? I need to name these pickaxes. That would be very wise. So I was thinking of having this actually sweep a little bit more here diagonally to match the turret would be cool and would look better from up there. And you might say, Joe, who comes, you know, and visits your base from up here? your enemies. That's that's about it. Nobody else really does that. But, you know, that's okay. Now, I'm not 100% sure I like the way that this pops out and up here. Maybe I need a little bit more of a transition state there. Maybe I need two more glass blocks worth of transition state. But where would I find those? Oh, that's right. Joe knows the way to go. Boom. Two more silicate structures employed for maximum roof-based sloping. Let's go ahead. I'm hoping to have another potato open. That's the opposite of a potato closed. No, dang it. I wanted to be on top of the map for the end of this. Because you know what? I think we've actually got a pretty good structure here. This little area is coming together. Now, I've still got this terrible metal supply that I don't know what to do with. We got to figure that out for next episode. But for this episode, we're going to go ahead and close it out. Dang it. Assuming that we can ever successfully jump onto the top of this map. Because I have very simple needs. And one of them is being up here. Excellent. This is the perfect place to view my wonderful creation. Yay. And I say that not out of sarcasm or frustration. Sometimes with enderpearls, you just gotta, gotta, you know, let your spirit flow and throw. But anyway, here we go. You might have noticed that this episode was mid-roll ad-free, and that is thanks to $50 a month Patreon sponsor, Karis Sophia, who, in lieu of that mid-roll ad, has paid for me to read a poem that I wrote myself. This one is a limerick. I've got word that my old university has a new writing room in the library. It's a space to write poems instead of dreaming alone and get unwelcome feedback immediately. So anyway, y'all feel free to leave unwelcome feedback in the comments since we're not in that room. That's an actual thing. They put a they put a poetry reading a poetry writing room in the library. It's crazy. It's like having a room just for cooking your food in your house. Like, I don't even know. Anyway, until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring. <laughs>